Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating rounded corners uh, on your boxes using CSS and uh, the help of some images uh, here in Dreamweaver CS4. Now we're going to be doing a bit of hand coding, that's actually typing the code with our hands, not clicking and checking things off in CSS editing dialog box here in Dreamweaver. So in reality, you should be able to follow this tutorial in programs other than Dreamweaver, as well as Dreamweaver. Uh, but here is what we're going to be creating, a very simple rounded box. It is pretty easy to do this, I just want to throw it out there. Uh, this is a technique that I, uh, I saw a while back, well a little while back, not really a while back, just a little bit of that while back. Uh, in Andy Budd's uh, CSS Mastery, I believe it was called, uh, book. Um, and it's, it's a great method. It's very, very cool. Easy to implement. Um, and by the way, that's a great book. Um, you, ought to, you ought to check it out. Um, so with all that out of the way, let's take a look at how we can create this rounded corner. We're actually going to start here in Photoshop, and it's a good idea to know what size you want the finished box to be because we need to set a width. Height really doesn't matter. The width is what is going to matter here because that's just the way we're setting the box up. There are ways to create uh, variable widths um, for your rounded edged boxes in CSS. Uh, but that's a different method. We'll cover that at some point. But for today, we're going to take a look at just a, a rounded text box that expands top to bottom, not side to side. So it's a good idea to know what width you have uh, for my box, I'm really, I'm going to kind of go out on a limb. I'm just going to say 350 for width um, because I'm just going to set my box width in CSS to be 350. I don't really have, I'm not working with a website, so I don't have, you know, constraints here. You might have to, you might only have 280 pixels of space. Whatever your amount of space is, uh, it's a good idea to know what that is so you know what size graphic you're making. Height really doesn't matter in this case, but for the sake of keeping this a nice box, 350 it will be. Hit OK and we should have a nice box appear right here. Now you need to go ahead and choose a color. So I'm going to select my foreground color picker and I'm going to I'm going to go with another blue but I'm going to choose a desaturated kind of a, a middle desaturated blue right out here and I want to just take note of this code here. I'm actually going to take a second and write it down. So that's 6085A7 and as long as I can read my handwriting later, we should be good. So I'm going to hit OK. And the next thing you need to do is grab the rounded rectangle tool, which right now for me is hiding underneath my line tool. Click and hold the line tool as I just did a few seconds ago. And uh, choose the rounded rectangle tool. And we want to set a radius that's going to be noticeable. So I'm going to go ahead. And that radius isn't big enough. Command or Control Z to undo that. I'm going to really kind of go crazy. We're going to choose about 30. And I'm going to try my best to get it aligned up into that corner. And I didn't. I'm going to hit Command or Control Z. Now something you can do to help you is go ahead and add a new layer. The hotkey for adding a new layer without any kind of dialog boxes or anything popping up in your face is Control Shift Alt N. That'd be Command Shift Option N on the Mac. Just throws another layer in there. No frills. Get it in there quick. It's a really great hotkey to know. I'm going to create my rounded rectangle. I'm just going to pull right down. There we go. And we have a nice rounded rectangle on its own layer. And that is kind of important. If you want to export this and, and maintain transparency, you can just shut off the background and you have transparent corners. You want to export it as either a PNG or a .gif file with uh, you know allowing transparency. I'm not concerned about that. I know the background of this website is going to be white and it's never going to change. So I'm just going to leave the white in there. It's probably a good idea though to go ahead and export it as you know something you know like a .png or a .gif uh, if you're using it in a real uh, website application. All right, so now that we've done that, we've decided that we are actually going to save it out as a JPEG. Uh, we're not concerned about transparency in this instance. All you need to do is go ahead and grab the rectangular marquee tool. Just drag out a selection above the top, uh, like so and then go image crop. We are going to need an image for the bottom, but that's going to be really easy to get that. I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to do uh, in just a moment. To save this guy, we're going to go file, save for web and devices. Uh, it may just be saved for web if you're using an older version of Photoshop. Go ahead and select that. The save for web dialog box pops up and we're going to choose JPEG. 
Um, you know what? Come to think of it, with an image where we got a bunch of solid colors, we should probably be going with .gif anyway. We don't have any transparency though, so we're not concerned about that. Uh, colors, we're going to set it to about 8, uh, although, you know, the size and file difference is so small, it's ridiculous. Uh, and then we're just going to hit save. And right here, we have our window popped up, and hey, it's right at the folder I want to save this in. So I'm going to say rounded top, and I'm going to save that. Now, in order to get the bottom, we're going to go image, image rotation, 180 degrees. Voila, we have the base of our rounded shape. And again, file, file, there we go, save for web and devices. And again, save this out. And in this case, we're just going to say rounded bottom. There we go. We can close the PSD. You can save the PSD if you like. I'm not even going to take the time of day to save that. And then I can close Photoshop down at that point. All right, we can also close this file. And what we need to do is start with a new HTML file. Well, we don't need to start with an HTML file, but I need to start with a new HTML file. Uh, you can work this right into whatever your whatever website you're working on. So we're going to go File, New, and I'm just going to choose uh, Give Me a New HTML File, Create. And here we have a blank HTML file. As I usually do, I'm just going to throw a title up there. Uh, I'm just going to say rounded corners. Not really a reason for doing that. It's more or less a habit um, slash something I always try to do. And then we're going to go file, save as, and I'm going to choose site root. And I'm just going to save this as uh, rounded.html. There we go, rounded.html. There it is. It just appeared in our our files panel, rounded.html. Now we're going to go over to code view. And what we want to do is add a little bit of code between these two tags right here, the opening and closing body tags. So I'm going to hit enter return a few times to move in there. And I'm going to go ahead and type open uh, angle bracket div space ID. And you can see my pop-up menu here saying, hey, you're talking about an ID. Yes, I'm talking about an ID. I'm going to hit enter, and it gives me the equal sign and the parenthesis, or the quote marks, and it's going to allow me to go ahead and type my ID right into there. So I'm just going to type R box, and that is box with a capital B. I'm going to select on the outside of that, closing angle bracket, hit enter or return a couple times, open angle bracket, and then just the backslash key or excuse me, that would be the forward slash key, and Dreammover is going to automatically close that tag for you. So here we've just created a div. If we go back to design view, you can see we have this div right here. Go back to code view, however, and something that I like to do um, when working with more complex projects, and I don't think I've ever mentioned this before, but it's just a good idea and it helps you know what this closing div tag belongs to, is right after your closing div tag, place an open angle bracket and then an exclamation point and two dashes and then your note you can just say r box and then two more dashes and a closing angle bracket and that's just a quick comment that is going to say hey look this closing div tag belongs to the r box opening div tag so if you're wondering what I'm doing over here, I belong to Rbox. And in this case, it's pretty obvious because that's all that's there. But sometimes when you're working on a more complex site, that becomes very, very helpful to do you know, something a little like that. So there's just a couple things I want to go ahead and do uh, as far as placing content into this div before we go and start writing our CSS. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and hit tab. That's going to indent our code. And I'm going to say open angle bracket. And we're going to style this with an H3 tag. And then just make our closing H3 tag like so. We're going to place our title in there in just a second. Hit enter or return once. And we're going to make an open paragraph bracket. And we're just going to paste in some lip sum uh, right here. I'm just going to grab a couple paragraphs. And because we're pasting them in here in code view, there's actually this formatting that shows up here is not going to show up. Uh, out here in the design view, but we still want to place our closing paragraph tag there So just open angle bracket and then that forward slash you can see it still connects now at this point This little note we gave to this closing div tag becomes a little more helpful because that opening div tag is way up here Now here between the h3 tags. We're just going to type something like uh, my first rounded box or if it's you know your second rounded box, you can write my my second rounded box too. That doesn't really matter, you know. Uh, then I'm gonna go over to design view, and we can see we have a little bit of formatting going on because we have our H3 tag styling my first rounded box, 
and then the rest of this is being styled as one giant paragraph. So what we need to do with CSS first off is go ahead and say, hey, look, Div, you can only be 350 pixels wide because remember, our image is only 350 pixels wide. So let's get started writing that CSS. So at this point, we can go a couple ways with the CSS. We could create an external CSS document. We're going to keep it simple, however, and just keep the CSS right here in this HTML document. So the first thing I want to do really before getting started is drag in the rounded bottom and rounded top images. Drag them right in, drop them in the files panel. They drop right in there. Great. Now it's time to go to code view, and uh, we need to place our CSS code between the opening and closing head tags. So I'm going to add a couple lines right in there. And what we need to type is open bracket style space type equals open and close quotes. And then inside of the quotes, we're just going to type text slash CSS. And then outside of the quotes, we're just going to put that closing angle bracket, enter return a couple times, and close out that style tag. Now that we've done that, head up inside of the style tag. And right inside of here is where all of our CSS code is going to go. Now, if you recall, when we created that div, we gave it an ID, if I scroll down here, of our box. So we need to target that ID and say, look, you, our box, you're going to do whatever the CSS stuff is talking about. So we're going to say pound our box, space, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. Within these curly brackets will lie all of our different styles. So the first thing I want to do is say width, if I can spell width correctly, width, colon, and we're going to say 350 pixels semicolon. And then we're going to say background hyphen color colon pound 6085A7 semicolon. So we've set a width and a background color of our box. We're going to choose design and we in fact have a smaller or less wide box and our background color is filling in very nicely. Go back to code view. It's time to attach a background image. So we're going to go space background hyphen image colon uh, URL, open a parenthesis, and because it's sitting right there on the same level as this HTML document, we're just going to type rounded bottom. I want the bottom GIF image to be what shows up here. We're going to go back to design view. We can see that that is in fact what shows up, but it's repeating and it's starting out at the top. We want it to not repeat and to attach itself to the bottom. So. We're going to go space here. Again, still within these curly brackets. We're going to go background, uh, dash, repeat, colon, no dash, repeat, semicolon, space. And then we're going to say background, dash, uh, position, colon. And we're first going to position it to press it against the left. So we're going to say left, and then just we're going to say uh, we're going to hit the space bar and say bottom. And then we're going to place a semicolon there. So if all went well, when we go to design, you can see we now have this nice rounded bottom of our box. Very, very cool. So again, the code is just background hyphen color. And you can use those tool tips that pop up as you're writing code. Dreamweaver is great at giving you them. Um, type in your code or your color code, your hex code there. Background image, you can browse for that image. If you have it in an images folder, you're not sure how to get to it. Uh, when, you, when you hit these, uh, when you type that colon, a, a little option to browse comes up. Uh, matter of fact, let me just show that to you real quick. So I'm not saying, yeah, it comes up. I'm going to go colon, you can see browse, hit enter, and it's going to open this up, site root, and I've got my rounded bottom right here. You might have within an images folder, whatever. Double click on that. And there you go, it shows up. Make sure you place the semicolon at the end. And that's very important after all these little styles. Place that semicolon. It can be very frustrating if something's not happening. Usually that is what the case is. You've left out a little semicolon or colon uh, or something of that nature, a little misspell. Uh, or a big one is leaving off the pound at the beginning of a color code. You need to make sure you include that. Otherwise, CSS just isn't reading a color. So the next thing we want to do is target the h3 tag within the r box so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit enter a couple more times i'm going to go pound r box space h3 so now we're saying hey you h3 tags within the id r box which is within that div r box we want you to do whatever we're about to type so space open and close curly brackets the first thing we're going to do is set a background image so we're going to say background hyphen image, whoa, hyphen image, browse for that image, rounded top is what we're looking for, hit OK, 
place that semicolon at the end. Then we're going to go ahead and type background hyphen repeat colon no repeat semicolon and we're also going to do a background positioning here so we're just going to say background and I'm just going to move down to position and we're going to say left and space and we're going to add top semicolon. Now what we want to do is sort of dh3 this uh, this h3 tag take away any kind of a margin and kind of tweak the padding a little bit. So I'm going to go with, if I recall correctly, what I did uh, when I wrote this tutorial for the newsletter. So that'd be margin zero pixels, and then we're going to go with a padding uh, dash left. If you if you just want to stick with you know just padding left or just padding right or top or bottom, you padding hyphen whatever it is. So we're going to say padding left, and we're going to go with one m semicolon, and we're going to go ahead and add some padding to the top I would have done semi or colon excuse me and again 1m of padding to the top semicolon let's see what we've got let's hop back out the design view and we also have a rounded top now and the cool thing about this is I can go into this text and I can just start hitting enter and the roundedness stays at the bottom however you can see we have a little problem here this m is getting a little too close to the, the curve uh, it really doesn't look very good so we need to add some uh, padding to the paragraph and that's going to be a simple matter of coming right up here and we're just going to target the paragraph tag so that's just P open curly bracket we're going to say padding on all sides we're just going to say padding colon uh, 1M let's give it 1M of padding on the left right top bottom close curly bracket like so go back to design view and you can see we have our 1M of padding and there we have it a simple uh, rounded corners box that is going to expand up and down for you uh, depending on how much content you put in there. It's really, really great for that. And uh, like I said, it's very, very simple. It's just a few lines of code right here, the CSS code. And you have your rounded corner uh, rectangle box that is going to expand for you. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a thing or two. Hopefully, maybe this has help break down the walls and get you into hand coding a little more. It really is not difficult at all. It can just be a little tedious. As long as, long as you learn you know, the words you have to type, you are going to be uh, well on your way to becoming a, a, a phenomenal coder. So go ahead and practice that. And again, like I mentioned before, I hope you learned a thing or two. I enjoyed bringing this to you. Uh, and before you leave, make sure you go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com uh, where you'll find all kinds of other great uh, tutorials and uh, resources. And you can even contact me if you have any questions. So that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching.